Hello everyone, bringing you a video today talking about this. Now this is a Royal Navy issue, Ventile windproof smock, intended for use primarily by carrier flight deck crew. So it's a piece of protective clothing for flight deck personnel. They do also turn up in some other interesting scenarios. They were worn by some journalists in the Falklands War. Certainly period footage shows these being worn along with other cold weather clothing uh, on shore, not just on board ship. Uh, but it's quite interesting. It has quite a few specific features around you know, the fact that it's a piece of flight deck clothing. And obviously these are very sought after because Ventile is a very, uh, very uh, sought after material in terms of windproof clothing. The cotton Ventile is both breathable and also very water resistant as well. So from that point of view, these are sought after any Ventile clothing is generally speaking. But we're going to run over this, of course, and talk about the various details and so forth. And they're quite distinctive. Uh, they're not uncommon, but they're sought after, so they're, they're quite uh, dear as well. Certainly at the moment on eBay, and you, you see some of the prices they go for are quite uh, astronomical. But anyway, talking about this in more detail, they appear, generally speaking, in photographs in the 1960s. It's possible they're late 1950s in origin, but there are certainly examples of these in photographs taken during the 1960s of, of Royal Navy carrier flight deck crews. Of course, they're generally worn underneath, well, they're worn with a surcoat, which is worn over the top, which hides a lot of the details. So whether the early ones had these flaps and so forth, I'm not entirely sure on that. My understanding on this is, is gleaned from various places, talking to people and so forth. So if anyone has any details or wish to correct me on anything in the comments, please do, um, because I'd be very happy to know, obviously, dates and so forth, that sort of thing. It would be good to nail down some more of the details regarding these. Looking at the front here, as I say, very distinctive, you have these two flaps, which we'll talk about first. My understanding with these is that these to root cables from uh, headsets, microphones and so forth, which are obviously worn by some members of carrier deck crews for communication purposes. And that's what these two flaps are, are for on the front. As you can see, we have four press studs on each or snaps in American terminology, uh, four of those on each of them. Snap them back on. We have a draw cord at the waist here, as you can see, and that actually has, I believe, this little pocket on the front here to take the loose end of the draw cord, and it just has a, uh, a clasp on the, the draw cord there to draw it in. So that just tucks in there. Normally that would be underneath a uh, surcoat anyway, as I say. Two hip pockets, the button flap, as you can see. Just uh, They are doubled over, so you have a very weatherproof flap there, as you can see. Now just a, a big patch pocket, one on each hip. And then looking up at the top here, which I'm going to talk about in one big lump, I normally start at the top and work down, but this is quite an involved bit of kit to talk about, is the hood on this. You have a big uh, flap around the front here, which comes just underneath the mouth when you're wearing it, with obviously two sets of buttons to adjust that. I'll just unbutton it so you can see that fully open. There's a draw cord inside as well, and you can see that runs around the inside of the hood here, around the inside of the neck there. So that, that does open right up, has a draw cord and then the buttons across. It's fastened up again. And then the hood is quite an involved, quite an involved uh, bit of kit. We have a peak which buttons up, as you can see there, has a press stud. So you've got a peak there, it could be worn up or worn down. There's some details of this we'll look at as we turn it around and look at the back as well. There's another feature of the hood. If we look in this side here, there's a roll of fabric here, held in place, held in place by a single press stud, as you can see there. This unrolls, and there are two more press studs right at the far end. And inside the hood on this side, you can see there are two female press studs there. You can see the the outsides of them. So that buttons across the face and the hood is up to give another layer of protection inside as you can see. So it's quite an involved piece of construction this. Some details we'll need to talk about as we move this around to look at the side as well but I'll roll this up again for the minute and snap it out of the way. So that's the, that's the hood, and as I say, that's the front of the garment. We'll move this around now and we'll have a look at the left-hand side. So looking at the left-hand side of the jacket here, the first thing we'll look at is the cuff. 
These are elasticated, as you can see. The elastic is actually loose, so this can be knotted. Let me show you here, it has a simple knot tied in it there. The elastic can actually be pulled tight and then knotted. So it's almost an elastic draw cord in that regard to really pull the sleeve in, pull the cuff in around, around the wrist there. So that's another interesting feature of the, of the design. We lift the hood up here. You can see in the side here, we actually have a large open space, which means that uh, headset or ear defenders can be worn underneath the hood. And if I pull the hood up here and show you the side aspect, you can see the hood lining is cut away uh, so that this can be used to hold um, an ear defender or a headset underneath the hood there. So it gives full protection to the a headset if you're wearing one in foul weather. Looking at the back of the smock here, you can see details of the construction. We can see the seams coming down from the shoulders here, the channel for the draw cord at the waist. And I said we'd have to have a look at the back of the hood. There are some further details to look at here. We have a strap on the top, which allows this to be adjusted to pull the flap up or down. At the front, we have one at the back here, which adjusts obviously the, the side uh, of the hood. It pinches the hood in to go, give a good fit around the head. We also have a button flap here. Now this may be for routing a strap for goggles through. I'm not entirely sure on that, but we do have a button flap at the rear of the hood there, as you can see. There wasn't really anything more to see on the other side of the smock, but we'll take a look at the inside now. And you can see it's lined right down the front here. Very interesting feature to talk about here is there's a little hole worked in underneath the hip pocket flap. And this basically where the two press studded flaps were on the front of the smock, they root down to this. So you could work a wire underneath the pocket flap and on the hip and then through this to various bits and pieces under, worn underneath, perhaps on a belt, uh, communication equipment and so forth. So that is worked in there as part of the design to allow a wire to pass through inside the smock, obviously in a weather, a fairly weather tight manner. You can see inside details of the hood here. If I just turn this around, well, you can see there perhaps better detail of that hole worked into the lining of the hood to allow a headset to be worn underneath, as you can see there. Move this round now and have a look at the side. Looking at the side here, you can see the sleeves aligned all the way down as well, as you can see. And again, we have the, the loose elastic in the cuff there, which allows that to be adjusted in around the wrist. Looking at the rear here, we can see again, fully lined right the way down to the, the hem there. And you can see we have the label in the rear here. This is a relatively modern example, but we'll get a close up of that now. You can see here that the label reads smock windproof blue. This is a size zero, which does fit me and I'm average height, fairly slim build, but it does fit me. And then you can see the contract number underneath that. These looking at contract numbers seem to have been made into at least the 1990s, if not more recently. So they're quite a long lived piece of flight deck clothing. And looking at the other side of the smock, there's one final detail to mention here, and that is another elastic draw cord down at the bottom here. You can see this is again is elastic, but loose. So it can be drawn in and tied off in a knot to pull the bottom of the smock in around the hips, as you can see there. You can see a photograph here of the windproofs being worn in the 1960s. And you can see there's a matching set of trousers which accompany the smock. I don't have a pair of these, unfortunately. They're something I'd like to pick up in the future. But as I say, being Ventile, when they turn up on eBay, they're quite expensive. I managed to pick up the smock elsewhere. So there's something I'm keeping an eye out for. And obviously there will be a video looking at the trousers as well in the future, if I do manage to pick up a pair. And the final thing to consider here is a recreation intended to represent an armourer. Fleet Air Arm Armourer on the flight deck of HMS Hermes during the Falklands War. And this was part of a video made previously looking at sea, air and land forces from the Falklands campaign. This shows the windproof smock worn with the rest of the flight deck accoutrements worn at the time. So you have the surcoat red with a black stripe for armourers or bombheads in naval slang, number eight trousers, working boots, the flight deck helmet, etc. If you'd like to learn more about this, I'll put a card in the corner of the video here to the original video. This is just to give you a bit of context and to show the smock being worn. As I said before, you certainly see these around in the 1960s. They were worn through the 80s. You see them in photographs from the Falklands War. And I believe they were still being manufactured in the 90s. So presumably being used in the 90s and after that date as well. Although that goes beyond my particular area of interest. I have to limit myself in terms of dates to a degree, certainly with collecting. But if anyone does have a, a date of when these were introduced and a date of when they went out of service, if they have gone out of service, I'd certainly be interested to know if you could leave a comment down below. 
So there we are. I hope you found it interesting looking at this. As I say, quite a sought after bit of military clothing. Not a huge amount known about them, but they, they certainly are flight deck clothing. And hopefully it's been interesting having a look at this in detail. If you have enjoyed looking at this and you'd like to see more of this sort of thing from the channel, then please do consider subscribing if you haven't already. And whether you're newly subscribing or you've previously subscribed, please do make sure you hit the little bell, little notification button down below. That will, of course, alert you when I upload future videos. If you really like my uploads and you'd like to support the channel, you can. Both Patreon and PayPal are linked down below. And a massive thank you, as ever, to everybody who supports the channel using those two methods. It's greatly appreciated, as I always say. If you'd like to follow the channel on social media, you can. Facebook, Instagram and Twitter are all linked down below. And if you want to get in contact but you don't really use social media, there's, of course, an email address down there as well. But that's everything for this video. So until next time, bye for now.